Hey guys, welcome to The Gunshot with me, John. Today we are going to be looking at this. This is a Merkel 140 AE double rifle. This particular one chambered in 470 Nitro Express. Without further ado, let's have a damn good look at it. Starting at the back, we have a half inch Packmire pad, again, hand fitted to a grade four walnut stock. The stock is laser checkered and has a sling swivel just screwed in there, but you can take that out and put it in with, with a QD one if you prefer. The grip cap here is plastic, but you can pop this out and you can put a metal one in if you prefer. There's an awful lot of optional extras with this gun that actually can make it quite special. You have a raised cheek piece, and actually the wood on this isn't horrific for a grade four, it's quite pleasant. Uh, remembering that German grades are very different to standard Southern European grades. Moving on to the grip, we have a laser checkered, non palm swelled, ambidextrous grip, although we do have a fairly large cheek piece there. It would be really nice to see some drop points on here, but we don't have them. We do have a cross bolt going through the head, the standard. Starting on the action here, we have a tang safety, not that exciting, and it is a manual safety for obvious reasons. This being a really rather serious, dangerous game rifle, you don't want any sort of safety capture and getting get in the way if you really need to use it for what it's worth. It being that way, it is a double trigger, modified Anson and Dealey style box lock action. The reason they went for an Anson and Dealey action is pure reliability. The fact that if one side breaks down, the other side will work will always help with it being a dangerous grain rifle. It, this rifle is available in 416, 470 Nitro Express, 500 Nitro Express and 375 Holland and Holland Magnum. So, you know, it's obvious what this is for, right? The trigger guard and the whole action is covered in this light, light etched scroll. This is the base model, so you can get thick arabesque engraving, you can have them custom engraved, you can get it color hardened, but obviously that comes at a price. This is essentially the entry level dangerous game rifle. And given that you're gonna put this through its paces potentially out in Africa, you might not wanna buy the prettiest thing in the world. What they've put here is a greener third bite with the two under, under lugs here being the other two bites. This is a good, strong action, and in fact, it's still quite quite stiff, actually. It doesn't lock up quite as beautifully as you'd want it to, but a few shots, I'm sure, will rattle that loose. It's good, strong action. It's not gonna let you down. I think that's pretty much what they've built here, is it is built for reliability, as much as it is still a good-looking beast. Moving on to the barrels, they're calibrated at 50 yards. However, you have these flip-up leaf sights for 75 and 50 there. Or you can just use your bull hones if you prefer. Very nicely engineered, work a treat, and there's a lot of nice things to say about those. You almost have a quarter rib before it scallops down here and raises again for your front sight there. These barrels are 600 mil long or 24 inches and the whole thing is only a meter long, just over a meter long. So it's a very compact system. However, one thing I can say is it weighs a huge amount. This particular one weighs in just under six kilos, which is a fair amount for a short rifle like this. A lot of the material being out front actually lends this gun to obviously fall forward. Not that that's the end of the world. You're not, you're not gonna be swinging it around that often. You're hopefully going to have to pull the trigger once, maybe twice. The forend isn't quite a splinter. In fact, it's nice and substantial, so you can get a good hold on there. It's also got a little cut here, so you can pop this out and you can fit a weaver style base if you so desire. There's a few other quite cool features on this gun that are worth mentioning. Firstly, that front trigger is articulated, so in a hurry, you're not going to have to bash your way through it. It will move out of the way for you. Secondly, it is an ejector. These are separate and will eject independently of each other which is quite nice when you're in a hurry. There are a lot of optional extras that they do list for this gun. The first being octagonal barrels. I'm not sure how that would work, but I quite like the theory of having a twin octagonal barreled rifle, a double octagonal barrel rifle. I mean, it would look weird, but it's got to be worth a try. It'd be interesting to see. I'm hoping that's just a typo, but I still like the idea. The concept is quite cool. Secondly, 
higher grades. This rifle will go from a grade 4 to a grade 7 and obviously probably to a grade 10 if you do ask them to. It's available with satin or a high gloss finish. You can get various lengths of pads if you're special ordering this for yourself. There is a pretty much unlimited customization on the stock. You could order it to your fit if you wanted so you can have a perfectly fitting rifle. Obviously all these are slight extras but not the end of the world. Uh, before I conclude I've just noticed there's a little mark there just so you can make sure your sights haven't moved or aligned. It's a nice feature. It really probably doesn't mean anything but it's these little things on a rifle of this quality that certainly make the difference. This rifle retails for around the seven and a half grand mark, which might feel like a lot, but in reality, for what you're gonna go and shoot with it, seven grand for the rifle itself isn't too bad. In terms of things to go on this rifle, there are not many. About the only thing that it possibly could do is not regulate with the ammo you put in, so you might have to be a little bit careful about what ammo you select for it, maybe even home load. Or potentially it might double discharge after a while if your triggers wear, if your triggers are set too light. However, these things are really unlikely to happen. And as long as the first thing is accounted for, aka you regulate the rifle to the ammo, or the ammo is regulated to the rifle, sorry, then there's very little to go wrong. In conclusion, I think it's really nice. You know, a lot of me that says that for seven and a half thousand pounds, I would want it to be much prettier and so on and so forth. But double rifles do not come cheap. Quality double rifles do not come cheap. And if I was out shooting the sort of game that this rifle is designed for, the last thing I want is a cheap gun that's gonna let me down. So I would sacrifice maybe some of the beauty for some of this reliability. And to be fair, when you shoulder this thing and perhaps dream of being in Africa, doing the sort of hunts this is designed for, I don't think the rifle matters that much. Feels right, it mounts well, and really you just know it's gonna do the job it's designed for. I like it. I like the fact that it's a 470 Nitro Express probably more than anything because that is superbly exciting. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Take care, goodbye, and I'll see you next time.